Levi. They're the good guys in the story. They're brothers too. They're brothers too, and they built houses, right? Who is the bad guy in the story now? AKA our adversary. The big bad wolf. All right, so now we're starting to shape up a lesson plan that kids in elementary age can start to understand that there's a bad guy and there's a good guy, just like in most fairy tales. All right, so now, after some tweaking, after I got that, I went and I tweaked it and added some of my things that I had, and I entitled it A Cyber Owl's Adventure Meet the Three Pigs. And I used the Cyber Owl's Adventure because the Cyber Owl featured it team, right? And so hopefully this would be a building opportunity for the library to rope in some more kids for cybersecurity and get them interested in that cyber patriot team. So I try to connect everything from a strategic level. So I had my objective, just like a good lesson plan does, right? So introduce elementary students to the exciting world of cybersecurity through interactive and hands-on activities, fostering an early interest in cyber awareness by illustrating the importance of cybersecurity in a fun and relatable way using the story of the three little pigs. So one of the other outputs of this is I want teachers to be able to take my lesson plans that I develop and be able to use it in their classroom. So it has to meet some key elements from an educational perspective. So my three activities included um, the cybersecurity tale, the three pigs and the big bad hacker, creating super secret codes, and who is afraid of the big bad wolf? Now, I had to modify based on the people that were in that class. Um, I did have 30 kids there that day, so I couldn't really do different, break them up into role playing, one person be a little piggy and the other person being the big bad wolf like I wanted to. But I have my daughter here, Ruby, be the big bad wolf, and she will get to be the big bad wolf again for y'all in a little bit. So y'all get to see how that goes. So. This is where the class interaction starts. So if you haven't already um, gotten one of these pieces of papers, hold up your hand, you will need a pen. Um, so we're going to give y'all a piece of paper and I'm gonna walk y'all through basically what these activities were so y'all can get an idea of what this is like. Right. Does everybody have a piece of paper? All right. So, it's a pig. So the first activity that I walk the kids through is I need a volunteer to tell me the story in their own words of the three little pigs. Who would like to tell me that story? Anybody? <laughs> Nobody wants to tell me the story of the three little pigs? You do? Okay, tell me the story of the three little pigs. Um, the three little pigs built a house out of straw. Okay. And then the pig was like, I want you to. Uh, or the, the wolf was like, I want you to. Um, the wolf was like, I'm going to eat you. So he blew the house down. And then they went and made a, a one out of sticks. And then the same thing happened. And then the bricks. And that didn't happen. And then the wolf was. Okay, but there was something else in that story that's key that will affect our other. Yes, Ruby, what else happened in that three little pigs? The wolf did not give up after the first try. He so did. he so he went to the roof and they boiled some water and the, the rope the wolf fell down and he got Right, because he tried to climb down the chimney. So he either right? swept him and ate him? Right. Okay, and then he ran away, right? Okay, which story are you talking about? Yes. So who's the good guys in this story? The wolf. The wolf is a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, too. He's one of All right, who's the good guys? The pigs, right? Yeah, the good and guys. so who's the bad guy? The wolf. The pigs. And so did the wolf ever give up? Nope. Not until the end, right? And so just like our cyber attackers, the wolf acted and kept trying and trying and trying. And so there finally was a defense and mechanism the, to stop him. All right, so that was activity one. Activity two, you're going to need your piece of paper. 
Um, so before I have them do activity two, I actually have them take a piece of paper. And based on the story of the three little pigs, I want you to draw me a house that you think would be secure. You can add all the defenses that you want. You can have a guard dog. You can have laser beams. You can have DNA code analysis. Draw me a house on one of your sheets of paper. Because we're going to get to that in a minute. But first, I need you to draw me a house. I did more now that this is an interactive lesson. All right. How's everybody's house strong going? Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Yeah. That's the point. Yes. All right, so now we're going to do some role play 
playing activity. So meet the big bad wolf. I have two wolf volunteers. They're going to come around and they're going to try to steal your password through something called social engineering. It's up to you to give them, give it to them or not. You can give it to us. We're trustworthy. <laughs> All right. All right. So wolves, please go. Tell me how many passwords you're able to get. And a larger group, you might want to make it partner based activity where you have one play the book and one play the game. <laughs> No, no, no. Like that. So that way they got away from the day and they knew what to look at. 
when they looked at different things on social media and on their email. So now we have a bonus round. So remember that house that I had y'all pull draw. So the last thing I had the elementary kids do is show me their houses. And then we talked about defense and defense. And we talked about how the bad guy could get past their defenses. So if I had a dog, how many of y'all had dogs on your house? All right. So I'm a bad guy. I'm going to throw out a piece of steak. And now that dog is distracted, and I can go on to the next level of security. How many of y'all had fences? All right, all I have to do is bring my wire cutters, so now I can cut through that. What if you have lava around it? Lava! I just build a bridge and go over it. You got so sad. There's lava and lava to other bridges. Yes, but these bad guys never give up. So who else had something else? What did they have? Yes, so my house is underwater, and it's protected by orcas. Okay, I have scuba gear. I'm going to go scuba diving. What about orcas? I just give them some fish. They're hungry. They're the kind that only like millionaire yachts. Millionaire yachts. Where there's a way, there's a will. All right, who else had something over here? Anybody else had something else? Yes, up top. I had a decoy house. A decoy house. Oh, deception. Oh, I like it. I had right? all my houses. But so just like any bad guys, right, they go and they go to that decoy and they eventually find out that it's a decoy. And then they do some more investigation or intelligence or research and they find out where the real house is. I made mine all look the same, but really, they're really bad inside the movie trap. And uh -huh. uh, if you get one question wrong, you get canceled on all social platforms. That's what research is for. All right, so what else have we got over here? Yes. And a honey trap room where as soon as you go in, you couldn't leave. Oh, 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 that's a good one. Yeah. Maybe that's where you bring two thieves, two bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> so that one, one gets caught and the other one can work from the outside and get them out. Yes. All right. Uh, a snake ate my house. A snake ate your house. Well, I have a knife and I can cut open that snake. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. Wow. All right. Who else? Yes. <laughs> my house has wheels on it, so I just drove away. Target. <laughs> <laughs> so, just like that, guys, I have a fast and furious car, so I'm going to go and have a group of thieves, and I'm going to be in my fast and furious car and go behind it. So I can get into it. So isn't that just exactly like our bad guys in the, in the cyber community? We close one vulnerability, and they find another one, right? We give updated hardware, and then they do supply injects, right? We do everything remotely and do layers of encryption, and then they get our encryption keys. So we're constantly fighting our bad guys. We're finally, always, you know, finding ways to go against the bad guys. They're finding ways to get it after our defenses, and then we have to find ways to make it even more secure. And then that adds money, right? All right, so we talked about that. And so then they understood the defense in depth at a very elementary level. All right, so why fairy tales? Why did I get stuck in fairy tales? Well, fairy tales go back thousands of years. So I didn't really have to worry about copyright because they were open to public domain, right? So that made it a little bit easy. Um, and so there's some key items about copyright. If it becomes public domain, if it's published before 1923 in general, um, if the author died over 70 years ago, and or if it's an anonymous author for over 120 years. Um, and so I really wanted something that the kids would be familiar with so I could get their engagement with, right? And so if I did like a more cyber traditional story and just talked about defense in depth, I would lose them. Yeah. But if I related it to something like they knew, like the three little pigs, and they each had their layer of defense, now I could tie it into something they knew with a new concept. So that way it helps layer that understanding from an elementary mind. So, I do have a copy of the, the completed lesson plan that we went through today. If anybody is interested in seeing that, um, I'll pass it around over here. 
Um, it's supposed to go one hour in length. And of course, it really just depends. Can I touch? Yeah, absolutely. It, also, it really just depends on how many kids you have in that environment and where they're at. So you have to learn how to adapt to those kids. Some of them may be more hands-on. Some of them really just want to hear the story and they'll get more out of just listening. Um, and so that's why I have different activities in this lesson plan. Um, I do plan to make more lesson plans based off the fairy tale. And then eventually as they kick off, my goal is to publish some of these, to make it accessible to teachers in the community. Because if you think about our education, right, especially in the rural communities, a lot of these teachers, they don't know what cyber is, or maybe they took a computer class in college and they became the computer teacher, right? Or they became the computer science teacher. So they're really learning as they go. So that's why our local um, region, Education 20, is always having workshops for them to learn and get educated, right? Um, cyber, as all of y'all know, it's not one time you get a degree or one time you get a cert certification and you're done. It's a field that you have to constantly learn. You have to constantly research and constantly grow. Because if not, you'll never get ahead of the adversary, right? And we don't want to play whack-a-mole all the time, and we don't want our databases compromised. So are there any questions at this time? Yes. So one thing that I, OK, so hi, my name is Alma, and I am a recovering classroom teacher, and I now work in cybersecurity. Awesome. And I came to this talk because I wanted to see what's going on in education with yeah. kids, right? And I don't know if you've thought about the pedagogical impact of this type of lesson using fairy tales, mm -hmm. because on a psychological standpoint, you know, thinking about the social, the social engineering side, these fairy tales have archetypes that speak across yes. ages and across cultures as to like the bad, the image of like, you know, think of the tarot or think mm -hmm. of any type of mythological story you can look at any mythology that also would not be copyrighted, right? And you can see like the bad thing, person, entity, someone who's malicious, who's trying to trick you, the trickster. So there's there's like a really also on a psychological um, level, this is a really powerful impact way to teach cybersecurity to not only young people, I also think adults can take a lot of this, like even people in a company, you know, teach your kids about cybersecurity, right. safety. This is something that parents can do with their kids, and I just wanted to add that, and thank you for giving this talk. And I'm glad that they accepted it, because I think it's important that we talk about education in cyber, because we can get really, really technical about things, but we have to work with people, right? Yes. So the education piece is important. Thank you. Yeah. And it also teaches uh, this information is also engineering, right? Um, yes, up here. I have a thank you too. I think you're filling a gap. Um, there's not much um, education that I've seen, um, especially with like homeschool curriculum, public school curriculum um, regarding cyber, unless it's in like high school and middle school. Um, so I like that you're trying to reach younger kids with this early. My, so not to take it to the dark place, but with the um, you know sex trafficking and human trafficking and social engineering part of that. Um, I think it's really critically important that we teach younger kids about this, kids starting young about the social engineering aspect. So thank you for starting that. Yeah. yeah. Be here at four o'clock when I get my ball. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions? No. All right. Well, um, what else do I have? Ah, that's it. So we have a big. Met Frank, he is talking later on today. He is the Honda Wild Cyber Patriot team uh, coach, and he also does some other things. The Women's Society of Cyber Jetsu is speaking at 1300. Susan right here is on the discussion panel, and Hollis over here is leading that discussion panel. Um, so we'll be over at the University Center. You'll see a lot of us with uh, either the shirt or we'll have like a red bandana on, so that's how you'll be able to recognize us. And we also have a community table out front by registration. So I'll be here. Yeah, do you have any questions? Are y'all recording that? Because I'm speaking at the same time here, so I, oh. I want to I wanna definitely hear your, your presentation. Yeah, I think that would be a B-slides question. All right. Yeah. So.
All right, so I am available for any questions. So thank y'all so much for coming. Um, I look forward to meeting y'all and interacting more.